Welcome to my uh, breakdown of the Biden special counsel report uh, into his documents. If you guys want to hit the like button, follow, subscribe, would appreciate it. I'm going to go point by point uh, and go over some of the egregious claims that are made by Robert Hur in this report. Um, I read through the entire thing. We're just going to go ahead and look over the executive summary and break it down point by point so that you guys have a better understanding of what's going on. Um, so just go ahead and get started. Our investigation uncovered evidence that Biden willfully retained and disclosed classified material after his vice presidency when he was a private citizen. This is actually like not true. They didn't find information that he willfully retained it. Um, they found some speculative evidence that he may have, but there was no evidence that was found whatsoever. Um, he said the materials included classified documents about military and foreign policy in Afghanistan and notebooks containing Mr. Biden's handwriting entries about the issues of national security and foreign policy. So um, the marked classified documents from Afghanistan we'll get into. Um, but basically what he concludes in the actual paper is that Biden really didn't have a reason to have them. And he couldn't prove that Biden had them at a time where he wasn't supposed to have them or knew about them at a time he wasn't supposed to have them. The notebooks, um, the notebooks we'll get into in a little bit. I will say that the best that you can pull from this is that Joe Biden was cavalier in his treatment of documents, as was a number of people in his administration. Um, I think that's a perfectly reasonable assessment to make, but we'll get into that as it goes along. Uh, so essentially what it talks about is that in 2009, Joe Biden opposed uh, sending more troops to Afghanistan against President Obama's recommendation. Um, and the information that he kept was basically material that was saying, um, you know, I have this uh, or material that was vindicating him in some degree. But again, Joe Biden didn't really need it because this was just going to go into the National Archives and he can have it later on. Um, those documents were found in his Delaware garage. Uh, so specifically the Afghanistan, and there's some documents related to Russia from the 1980s, um, 70s and 80s. Um, <clears throat> there's a, it goes on to talk about also during the eight years as vice president, Mr. Biden regularly wrote notes by, in, uh, by hand in notebooks. Some of them were classified. There were president's daily briefs and national security meetings. So the principle of the DOJ and the reason they didn't charge him for any of these notebooks or even considering it, despite the fact that Biden admitted that he had them, is because Reagan did the same exact thing. And the DOJ said, no, he can have them. There's personal property. So there's precedent for Joe Biden to believe that he could, in fact, have them, even if they had classified information. Now, should he be allowed to have them? No. But he at least believed that he did. Uh there were, these notebooks were found in unsecured location spaces in Virginia and Delaware homes and used some of the notebooks as reference material for his second memoir. No one has identified any classified information published in Promise Me, Dad, but Mr. Biden shared information, including some classified information from those notebooks with his ghostwriter. And he did this unknowingly. Uh, frequently, he would skip over uh, sharing uh, what he believed was classified information. Um, which is one of the reasons that didn't show intent, even though on three occasions Joe Biden did read off classified information. <clears throat> uh, so the documents on Afghanistan have up to top secret slash sensitive compartmented information level. The problem is, though, is that the reason, you know, is while it did, these documents did hold national security and defense stuff. The problem is, is that the problem is, is that even though they did have this, you, are you going to convince a jury for something that's over that by years in a conflict we're not in that you're going to convict him on these? It's just not not reasonable. And again, I'll get into all the minutia of all this stuff in a second. I just wanted to read out the key points so that we're all sort of have a background of what this says. Uh, these documents. Uh, sorry. Next one. <laughs> A recorded conversation with his ghostwriter in February 2017, about a month after he left office, Mr. Biden said while referencing his 2009 Thanksgiving memo that he had just found all the classified stuff downstairs. Um, and this was just a month after he left office. Uh, just a month. And it was the only time it was referenced. It was the only time that it was referenced uh, was in that one voice recording with his ghostwriter. Outside of that, there's no evidence whatsoever that the documents were ever in the Virginia home. Because the problem in this case is that in the Virginia home, right, um, 
he couldn't have documents after his presidency. He said he had documents down there. He was referencing Afghanistan, but there's also no evidence that those documents were the ones that they found in his Delaware home. Realistically, were they? Probably. They probably were. But the only time that Biden can be criminally found liable is that time from it being in his Virginia home and him knowing about it, but they don't have any evidence that he knew about it. In fact, it goes on to say that um, we do not believe this evidence is sufficient as jurors would likely find reasonable doubt for one or more of several reasons, both when he served as vice president and when the Afghan documents were found in Mr. Biden's Delaware garage in 2022. His possession of them in his Delaware home was not a basis for prosecution because he was vice president and president. He had the authority to keep classified documents at his home. So the only time that they could have charged him again was in 2017 in Virginia. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Biden could have found the classified uh, Afghanistan documents at the Virginia home in 2017 and then have forgotten about them soon after. Uh all of the classified stuff downstairs, his tone was matter of fact. For a person who had viewed classified documents nearly every day for eight years as vice president, including regularly in his home, finding classified documents at his home less than a month after leaving office could have been an unremarkable and forgettable event. Notably, the classified Afghanistan documents did not come up again in Mr. Biden's dozens of hours of recorded conversation with his ghostwriter. And they found these boxes, it goes on to say, with some household items in the basements indicating that it had just sort of been forgotten about. Uh, this is where we're going to have a problem with the special counsel, though, is that he says, in addition, Mr. Biden's memory was significantly limited both during and after his recorded interviews with the ghostwriter in 2017 and in his interview with our office in 2013 or 2023. Uh, his cooperation uh, basically is one of the reasons they didn't charge him, and it could have been an innocent mistake rather than act fl acting willfully and with the inability to uh, intend to break the law. It goes on to say that he uh, is an elderly man with bad memory. There's a number of problems with this. I read through the information that he gave to indicate that Joe Biden somehow's mental faculties are not there. Um, and all of the things are relatively benign and human. Uh, first thing, these interviews took place after the, uh, the Hamas attacks. So very clearly, Joe Biden's under a tremendous amount of stress and pressure, and he's being interviewed by something while he has a potential major conflict that could break out in the Middle East. Um, but the, some of the things that he references were Joe Biden was unable to remember the exact years that he was president or that he was vice president and the year his son died. And I don't find that remarkably shocking. Um, you know, I've had people that I've lost throughout my life. I could not tell you what year they died in. I'd have to think back to it. I couldn't tell you years that I worked at particularly particular companies. I would have to go back through that. I think that's completely normal stuff. Um, and for me, I'm just like that. I forget dates pretty easily. Um, Another viable defense is that Mr. Biden might not have retained the classified Afghanistan documents in his Virginia home at all. They can't even prove that he had the, the thing there. The reason they charged, the reason they didn't charge Joe Biden is not because he doesn't know where he is or he's mentally impaired or something to that degree. It's because they couldn't find any evidence. They couldn't find any evidence against him at all. So, it, they couldn't prove that he knew he had the documents. They couldn't prove that the documents he was referencing in that audio tape were the documents that were in the Virginia home and then moved to Delaware. They also can't prove it because he had professional movers. So he didn't even go through the boxes. He had professional movers move his stuff out of his Virginia home to his Delaware home when he stopped renting it. Um, uh, in particular, no witnesses, photo, email, text message, or any other evidence conclusively places the Afghan documents at the Virginia home in 2017. Quote, I just found all the classified stuff downstairs, end quote. He could have been referring to something other than the Afghanistan documents. <sighs> we also consider that at trial, uh, again, this goes back to the elderly old man thing, but the things that they're claiming that he did or, or whatever that degree is, is just is just just bad. I actually had, so there were documents that were found in his home 
there were documents that were found at the Penn Center, and there were documents that were found that were donated to the University of Delaware um, that he had people go over. In the instance of the Penn Center, um, I actually had a follower reach out to me. They have one of their their sons was investigated by the special prosecutor. One of their sons was investigated by the special prosecutor, and they told me several weeks ago that they were packed up and sent there by mistake, which actually ended up being the case in this was that they were packed up, documents were sent to the Penn Center uh, by mistake. And this is what they concluded in it, that Joe Biden likely had nothing to do with the moving of those documents and had probably never been through them before. Uh, the University of Delaware, when they found documents there, they were donated. Those had been gone over by a staffer and they didn't find anything declassified. One internist with the ar archivist they found something that was classified, which they called the FBI, and was turned in. So really, there's just not very good evidence. There's no evidence whatsoever that Joe Biden knew about the documents at the Penn Center or the University of Delaware. There's just no chance. There's no evidence to that, even though Robert Hur attempted to insinuate it. There's no evidence. Then, uh, the stuff in his home in Delaware, they don't even know if that's the stuff that was in the Virginia home. Again, is it? It looks like it, Yeah. Yeah, it looks like that was the stuff that he was referencing and that got moved, but uh, it was intermingled with a lot of other personal stuff. So it wouldn't be a surprise, you know, that he just had forgotten about it. They also cite not um, they also cite not prosecuting him because he cooperated um, and, you know, uh, he turned everything over. They also make the distinction between what's going on with Donald Trump and what's going on with um Joe Biden and why Joe Biden is not being prosecuted and Donald Trump is. These are what they give. After being, this is talking about in reference to Trump, after being given multiple chances to return classified documents and avoid prosecution, Mr. Trump allegedly did the opposite. According to the indictment, he not only refused to return the documents for many months, but he also obstructed justice by enlisting others to destroy evidence and then to lie about it. In contrast, Mr. Biden turned in classified documents to the National Archive and Department of Justice. Cons uh, consented to the search of multiple locations, including his homes, sat for voluntary interview, and in other ways cooperated with the investigation. Um, it goes on to talk about, again, note cards, which some of them almost certainly were classified. Um, so, but the policy of the DOJ had been to not do anything about those in any capacity. Um, other class, or oh, sorry, going on here, Mr. Biden's ghostwriter and destruction of evidence. So after learning of the special counsel appointment in this matter, Mr. Biden's ghostwriter deleted audio recordings he had created of his discussions with Mr. Biden during the writing, writing of Mr. Biden's 2017 memoir. Um, and this is, this is interesting because the, they had significant value is what Robert Hurst states. And I want to pull up my notes really quick. Um, I want to pull up my notes here because I go over this, but essentially what happened is he did, in fact, delete, uh, Zwanitzer did delete documents related to this, not documents, but recordings related to um, the discussion. The reasons he gave, though, are pretty plausible. Um, first things first, the FBI agents did not know that he, he, by the way, he kept transcripts. So he deleted the recordings after he found out about the investigation, but kept the transcripts. Uh, for starters, the FBI agents did not know that he had the recordings. They did not know that he had the transcripts. He turned those over uh, willingly. Uh, and he didn't know that he was going to be part of the investigation either. He had concerns over hacking because other stuff that he had worked on had been hacked before. Uh, and so he was concerned about that. And he was working on a book about a hacking tool called Pegasus, which he was concerned. So he ended up deleting this. Uh, he deleted it also, he said, out of respect of privacy, uh, and he had received threats. So he was already concerned about being targeted. He produced the devices to the FBI, consented to searches of the devices, and uh, yeah, so it's interesting because the only evidence that they have, you, you could say that the guy deleting it was a dumb idea, whatever, he didn't know he was going to be part of the investigation, but... Uh, he turned everything over as soon as he found about it. The FBI recovered it. And the only evidence that they have that Joe Biden ever had these documents in his Virginia home were the transcripts and audio recordings that he handed over. Um, <laughs> this turned out pretty much exactly how I thought it was going to be. Uh, there's no evidence whatsoever that Joe Biden uh, held these 
classified documents and retain them willingly. Um, and the special counsel report very clearly shows that there isn't any evidence. Uh, could we say that this is, could we say that this is irresponsible of Joe Biden? Yeah. Yeah, I would say that. And especially because when you look at everything that was happening in his administration, the concerns about documents, the concerns that were ignored, I would say absolutely. Yeah, that is definitely something to be concerned about. Does it rise to criminal conduct? No. And is it comparable to what Donald Trump did? Not even remotely close. Uh, I hope that helps you guys understand it. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. I will see you guys on the next one. Make sure you like and follow and subscribe.